uh, this is the path. Uh, there's a bit of a debate whether the monetary policy stance is appropriate or tight enough to anchor inflation, inflation expectations. Um, this is a weekly repo rate. The compound rate is 56%. Uh, one year ahead inflation, according to markets, is roughly about 38%. So we think we've done enough, meaning the central bank thinks we've done enough. But of course, uh, there's going to be additional support in the form of selective credit tightening and quantitative tightening. So we do believe that the program is working, and it will work. I'm going to show you. Uh, but of course, I can't yet prove it in terms of disinflation on an annualized basis. Now, IMF... They published a paper last September. They looked at 56 countries, 100 inflation episodes, inflationary shocks. And they concluded that it takes 3.4 years to bring inflation back to pre-shock levels. So as you can see, we're still at the very early stages of our program. We only unveiled the program in September. So people want quick fixes and that, that is not in our books. We don't have quick fixes. We don't have shortcuts. I, when I travel around the country, I tell business people that I'm not a magician. You know, it takes time to fix things. So we have to be patient and, you know, uh, committed uh, going forward. Um, anyway, this is our disinflation path. As you can see, uh, we did say uh, there's going to be a transition period to disinflation. So we are still in the transition period. Transition period will last through June this year. And after that, we are banking on sustained, speedy disinflation. But why? Why we need a transition period? There were multiple of factors. Exchange rate was held artificially pre-election last year. Um, there was a big earthquake. Um, earthquake has caused significant hole in the budget. So all of that required a transition period because it wouldn't have been realistic. Usually you have a choice. You can go for a shock therapy. You can go for a, a gradual, realistic adjustment. We chose to go you know, for a more realistic, tolerable, you know, gradual adjustment. Because political ownership matters, and that's really key, and right now, we enjoy strong political ownership. So, this inflation will come. Monetary policy does work, but it works with lags. Even in countries when you have very strong monetary transmission, you know, monetary policy transmission mechanism, very effective ones, it takes 12 to 18 months, really, to, to, to work. And so we believe it will work. Uh, but of course, point estimates are subject to debate. Uh, that's why we have a band. Uh, on the fiscal side, we're doing an expenditure review and combating informal economic activity. Both of these aspects are going to, you know, I'm going to speed those up. Uh, you know, we've been working on this. We would like to bring the overall deficit below 3% of GDP, which was the case and also keep debt to GDP ratio below 40%. Right now, debt to GDP ratio is 34%, but it's gonna go up a little bit, and deficit last year was 5.4%, uh, thanks to massive fiscal consolidation measures we took uh, last year. So, um, going forward, this year deficit looks set to stay high, this is the program targets. Last year, we did much better than the program targets. We find it convenient to put out more realistic numbers and do better. Um, but, but anyway, I do believe that the fiscal deficit in 2024 will be significantly lower than what the program suggests. And then from 2025, 2026 onwards, overall deficit, including earthquake impact, will be substantially below 3%. Now, last year, excluding earthquake, deficit was 1.6% of GDP. So we really did well, at, you know, 
addressing the underlying problem. No, earthquake is one off. And can we live with one off? Here is the picture. Yes, we can. If you look at global, you know, overall indebtedness of countries, including private sector debt, public sector debt, you know, corporate, household, etc. Uh, Turkey's debt to GDP ratio is 110%. Global emerging markets average to 255%. And the, re- you know, the world average to 333%. By the way, mature markets is closer to 400%. So clearly, we can live with one of a shock. So don't be concerned on the fiscal side. It's in good hands, and we're going to do a good job. Last year, we have proven. I front-loaded the fiscal adjustment, really, because I know that actions speak louder than words, so we started with front-loading the measures. Otherwise, you wouldn't believe us, but we have a good track record. Anyway, current account deficit, that is the source of typical macro-financial instability. That's why what we're doing to bring inflation down and a little bit more, like energy transition, new industrial policy, will help us bring current account deficit on a lasting basis to less than 2.5% of GDP. Last year, it was 4%. This year, highly likely less than 3%. And next year, highly likely sub 2.5%. Why? What's magical about 2.5%? Well, we've done our math. We want to keep, we want to bring external debt to GDP ratio on a downward path, that's number one. And number two, we would like to accumulate reserves because our reserves you know, have been depleted to some extent, so we're rebuilding reserves. So that's really the story.